What if I told you that the foundations of our civilization, our technologies and our knowledge were the legacy of an ancient race of extraterrestrial beings? Sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, right? But for those who subscribe to the Anunnaki theory, this isn't mere fiction but a plausible explanation of human history. Today, we're embarking on a journey to a hypothetical celestial body, the so-called Planet X or Nibiru, exploring the mythology surrounding the Anunnaki and their alleged influence on humanity. Planet X, more commonly referred to as Nibiru or the Ninth Planet, is a theoretical planet that's believed by some to exist on the extreme outer edges of our solar system. This concept isn't a new one, in fact it has roots going back to the 19th century when scientists like Percival Lowell postulated the existence of an unseen planet to explain the irregularities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. However, the discovery of Neptune's moon Triton and further observations led to the dismissal of these theories. Fast forward to the 21st century and the idea of Planet X has been resurrected, not as Nibiru, home to an alien civilization, but as a potential ninth planet in our solar system a world perhaps 10 times the mass of Earth and as much as 20 times farther from the Sun than Neptune. The proposed existence of this planet. Nine comes from the strange clustering and distinct tilt of a group of high perihelion Sedna-like objects. These are distant minor planets that have orbits taking them hundreds, even thousands of astronomical units from the Sun. Scientists Constantine Batigin and Michael E. Brown at Caltech presented strong evidence of this unseen massive perturba in 2016. They noticed that a group of icy objects beyond Neptune, known as Trans-Neptunian Objects or TNOs, had odd orbits that appeared to be influenced by the gravitational tug of a larger, distant unseen planet. However, despite extensive searches and numerous candidate objects, this ninth planet remains supposedly unconfirmed. Some scientists propose alternative explanations for the TNO's peculiar orbits, such as the collective gravitational influence of a distant disk of icy bodies. Nevertheless, the allure of a hidden world in our own cosmic backyard continues to captivate scientists and lay people alike. The Anunnaki, a term that means those of royal blood, or those who from heaven to earth came, are a group of deities that appear in the mythological traditions of the ancient Sumerians, Akkadians, Assyrians and Babylonians. According to these ancient Mesopotamian cultures, the Anunnaki were the most powerful deities in the pantheon, descendants of An, the god of the heavens, and their primary function was to decree the fates of humanity. But the story of the Anunnaki takes on a more intriguing form in the hands of Zechariah Sitchin, a controversial author best known for promoting an alternative interpretation of human history. In his Earth Chronicles series, Sitchin proposed that the Anunnaki were not mythological deities, but rather extraterrestrial beings from a planet in our solar system beyond Neptune, the aforementioned planet X or Nibiru. Sitchin's theories, although not supported by mainstream historians or scientists, draw upon his own interpretations of ancient Sumerian texts and the iconography and symbolism of Mesopotamian art. He suggests that the Anunnaki came to Earth around 450,000 years ago in search of minerals, particularly gold, to save their dying planet by using it to repair their damaged atmosphere. Moreover, Sitchin postulates that these ancient astronauts genetically engineered Homo sapiens as a labor force. He credits the Anunnaki with accelerating our evolution and introducing advancements in human civilization, including the concepts of agriculture, law, architecture, and even the fundamentals of astronomy. Interestingly, several ancient cultures indeed have stories about gods descending from the heavens, teaching humanity various aspects of civilization, from the fallen angels called the Watchers in the Book of Enoch who shared forbidden knowledge with mankind, to the Vimana riding gods of Hindu mythology, and the feathered serpent deity Quetzalcoatl of the Aztecs who was said to have brought knowledge of agriculture and the calendar system to humans, there are these pervasive narratives of sky gods uplifting mankind. But why would such advanced beings decide to come to Earth of all places? As per the theories espoused by Zechariah Sitchin, the answer lies in a metal we're all quite familiar with. Gold. Gold has always held a special place in human history, seen as a symbol of wealth, power and divinity. But for the Anunnaki, it apparently had a far more practical purpose. The idea is that the Anunnaki's home planet, Nibiru, had a severely damaged atmosphere, not unlike the concerns we have about our own ozone layer. 
The Anunnaki, being an advanced civilization, knew how to mitigate this problem. By suspending gold particles in Nibiru's atmosphere, the gold would act as a shield reflecting harmful radiation back into space and insulating their planet, much like how we use reflective materials to guard against the sun's heat. However, Nibiru's gold resources were dwindling and this is where Earth entered the picture. Our blue planet, according to Sitchin's interpretation of Sumerian texts, was rich in this precious metal, which ultimately led to the Anunnaki's arrival on Earth. It suggested that they established mines, particularly in Africa, where today we find some of the richest gold deposits in the world. It's an intriguing theory, and it mirrors some of our own contemporary interests in space exploration. For instance, today we talk about asteroid mining as a potentially lucrative enterprise because of the rich deposits of precious metals that asteroids contain. So the idea of an advanced civilization scouring the cosmos for resources isn't entirely outlandish. When we think of gold, we often picture it as a symbol of wealth and power, used to create artifacts, adorn temples, or be fashioned into jewelry. But according to the Anunnaki theories, gold was more than just an ornamental or symbolic resource, it was a solution to a planet-wide problem. As we discussed earlier, the Anunnaki's home planet of Nibiru supposedly had a compromised atmosphere. The Anunnaki sought to repair this by using gold, a resource that was apparently scarce on Nibiru, but abundant here on Earth. But why gold, you might ask? Interestingly, gold has a number of properties that make it uniquely suited to such a task. It's highly reflective, able to block heat and light, and it's incredibly resistant to corrosion. In a way, gold could act as an extremely effective insulator if suspended in an atmosphere, reflecting harmful solar radiation back into space while keeping the desirable conditions intact. In fact, we see a bit of a parallel in our own space endeavors. For instance, the visors on astronaut helmets are coated with a thin layer of gold to protect them from the unfiltered sunlight in space. We also use gold in our satellites and spacecraft for similar reasons. So, the idea of using gold in such a manner might not be as far-fetched as it seems. However, while the notion is scientifically plausible, the theory of the Anunnaki using Earth's gold for this purpose remains unsubstantiated. There's no solid archaeological or historical evidence to suggest that ancient extraterrestrials mined Earth for gold. The narrative stems from a certain interpretation of Sumerian texts, which is not universally accepted. The importance of gold to the Anunnaki and the resultant interaction with humans, as per the theory, does paint a fascinating picture of our ancient history. Those who subscribe to the Anunnaki theory believe that these beings had a major role to play in the development of human civilization. Some say that they essentially jump-started our society, providing us with knowledge and tools that greatly accelerated our progress. The Sumerians, one of the earliest civilizations on Earth, are often mentioned in these discussions. They were known for their advances in astronomy, mathematics and law, among other fields. Some argue that these advances were too sophisticated to have developed without outside influence. Hence, they postulate the Anunnaki imparted these advancements upon the Sumerians. An interesting part of this theory includes the origins of written language. Some believe the Anunnaki gifted the Sumerians with cuneiform, one of the earliest known systems of writing. By giving humans the ability to record and pass on knowledge, the Anunnaki allegedly elevated human culture and set us on the path to becoming the technologically advanced civilization we are today. Proponents of the Anunnaki theory often point to depictions in ancient Sumerian art and iconography that seem to show human-like beings of larger stature, sometimes depicted with wings or surrounded by symbols of power and divinity. These, they claim, are the Anunnaki, and their presence in such artwork is further proof of their influence. Believers in the Anunnaki theory often highlight similarities between various ancient cultures as further evidence of extraterrestrial intervention. For instance, the story of a flood and a savior figure who rides it out in a ship, which is seen in both the Sumerian epic of Gilgamesh and the biblical story of Noah, is thought to suggest a common origin. Are these independent stories or echoes of an ancient memory shared by all humans? Moreover, across various civilizations, from Sumerians to ancient Egyptians, Mayans, and even Native American tribes, there are references to sky gods or celestial beings who descended from the heavens. 
could these be disparate accounts of the same extraterrestrial visitors, the Anunnaki? Then there's the matter of pyramids. These majestic structures were built in different parts of the world by civilizations that supposedly never had contact with each other. The ancient Egyptians, the Mayans and civilizations in ancient China. Each set of pyramids aligns with certain celestial bodies or events. It's an intriguing correlation that prompts the question, was this a coincidence? Or is there something more to it? But as compelling as these parallels may be, they are not universally accepted as evidence of Anunnaki influence. Many scholars attribute these similarities to convergent evolution of civilizations, the idea that different societies independently arrive at similar cultural practices and beliefs. Others theorize about the possibility of ancient cultural exchange that we don't fully understand yet. It's important to keep in mind that just because something isn't fully understood, it doesn't automatically mean that the explanation is extraterrestrial. So are we the descendants of an advanced alien civilization? Or are the Anunnaki tales simply part of our rich tapestry of mythology, the product of imaginative storytelling and our inherent fascination with the unknown? As of now, the lines between fact and fiction remain blurred, but as we continue to explore our universe and uncover the secrets of our past, we might someday stumble upon definitive answers. Until then, let's keep probing, questioning, and marveling at the captivating mysteries of our existence. Have you ever looked up at the stars and wondered if we are truly alone in the universe? It's a profound question that stirs the imagination and makes us question what we know about our own history. Today, we're diving deep into ancient Mesopotamia to explore the intriguing theory of the Anunnaki. Found in Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki were described as celestial beings that descended from the heavens. But could they have been more than just myth? And what if I told you this ancient tale has echoes in other cultures around the world, posing the possibility of a common narrative of extraterrestrial contact? In the heartland of Mesopotamia, one of the cradles of human civilization, the Sumerians etched a compelling narrative into clay tablets. They spoke of beings known as the Anunnaki, divine entities who descended from the heavens. These celestial figures were not mere flights of fantasy but were perceived as genuine influences in the Sumerian society. In the Sumerian cosmology, the Anunnaki were believed to be the offspring of An, the sky god, and Ki, the earth goddess. And among these divine figures, some, like Enki, Enlil, and Inanna, held significant roles in Sumerian myths and epics. They were seen as divine mediators, connecting the celestial realm with the earthly domain and playing a part in the creation and early development of humanity. The Sumerian texts describe Eridu as the first city established by the Anunnaki on Earth. Interestingly, Eridu is considered one of the oldest cities in the world, and it's in this ancient city that the concept of urbanization, written language, and state rule first began to emerge. The Anunnaki were often associated with bestowing wisdom and knowledge upon humanity. They're said to have taught humans the arts of civilization, like law, agriculture, architecture, and writing, catalyzing the societal shift from hunter-gatherers to settled agricultural communities. Now the crux of the issue remains. Are these accounts of the Anunnaki mythological constructs created to provide explanations for natural phenomena or historical events? Or could they be interpreted as early human interactions with beings from another world, documented through the only means available at that time, myths and legends? The ripples of the Anunnaki influence, it seems, extend well beyond the boundaries of Sumer. Whether it's under different names, titles, or representations, ancient cultures around the globe have distinct tales of divine beings descending from the skies to interact with humanity. Let's turn our gaze across various cultures and decipher these intriguing narratives. In ancient Egypt, for instance, the pantheon of gods was believed to have descended from the heavens to guide human society. Their god of wisdom, Thoth, similar to the Anunnaki, was said to have introduced writing, mathematics, and architecture to humanity. Intriguingly, the Sumerians' neighbor, the Akkadians, had their equivalent of the Anunnaki called the Igorge. Even halfway across the world in Mesoamerica, the Maya believed in the Kukulkan, or Feathered Serpent, a deity that bestowed knowledge and wisdom. He was known as Quetzalcoatl among the Aztecs. Meanwhile, the ancient Indian texts, the Vedas, tell of the divas, divine beings who interacted with humans and even interbred with them. 
a narrative strikingly similar to the Anunnaki's role in Sumerian texts. In Greek mythology, the gods resided atop Mount Olympus but frequently descended to Earth to interact and sometimes mate with humans, leading to the birth of demigods and heroes. Again, this resonates with the Sumerian account of the Anunnaki breeding with humans to create demigods. These parallels in disparate cultures across various geographical boundaries pose a bewildering question. Are these uncanny resemblances mere coincidences, sprung from the shared human impulse to personify and deify natural phenomena and existential quandaries? Or do they point towards a common thread, an ancient global influence by sky beings weaving through the tapestry of human civilization? As we dig deeper, we tread along the precipice of the known and the unknown, venturing into realms that blur the boundaries between mythology, archaeology and even, perhaps, extraterrestrial encounters. This tantalizing and universally resounding theme of celestial beings lending a hand in the development of human civilization is truly compelling. From the celestial dragons of Chinese lore, the Norse gods of Asgard, to the divine pantheon of the Roman Empire, Stories of mighty beings from the stars are deeply entrenched in our collective consciousness. So why is it that across wide oceans, over towering mountains, through vast deserts and deep in lush rainforests, the tale of star beings visiting Earth, helping humans or sometimes wreaking havoc, finds its way into the oral and written traditions of civilizations? One explanation proposes that these myths are archetypal, that is, they represent universal symbols or motifs embedded deep within our collective unconscious, as Carl Jung might argue. They are part of our human heritage, a product of the shared fears, desires and the innate curiosity about our place in the universe that is common to all human societies. Another explanation draws on the theories of Swiss author Erich von Däniken, who argues that these stories are not merely symbolic but literal descriptions of encounters with extraterrestrial beings. He contends that these celestial beings were, in fact, technologically advanced aliens who were mistaken for gods by our less advanced ancestors. Moreover, this global myth of celestial beings suggests a diffusion of cultural elements between ancient societies. This could mean that either these stories were so universally relevant that they spontaneously arose in each culture, or that ancient civilizations were much more globally connected than we give them credit for, sharing stories and myths across vast distances. Yet another perspective comes from the field of astroarchaeology, which suggests that these stories might represent early humans' attempts to understand and document astronomical phenomena. The celestial beings may be personifications of planets, stars, and celestial events like comets or meteor showers. However, the line of thought that we're most interested in aligns with the Sumerian text's narrative that these beings were advanced entities who directly intervened in human society, teaching us agriculture, architecture, writing and social organization. As we delve further into this topic, we'll encounter theories both intriguing and controversial. Each viewpoint offers a different lens to view these ancient narratives that have shaped our world and continue to puzzle and fascinate us to this day. The question is, which lens brings the truth into the sharpest focus? And are we prepared for what we might see? With such fascinating theories and tantalizing connections, one might be tempted to jump headfirst into believing these stories. However, as any good investigation goes, we need to approach this from a scientific perspective, scrutinizing the evidence, evaluating its validity, and understanding its context. Firstly, let's consider the Sumerian texts themselves. The clay tablets on which these stories were written were inscribed with cuneiform script, one of the earliest known forms of writing. Translating these is a complex task, often open to interpretation, so it's entirely possible that descriptions of the Anunnaki and their actions may not be entirely accurate. For instance, Zechariah Sitchin, a popular author known for his translations of these texts, proposed that the Anunnaki were extraterrestrials who came from a planet called Nibiru. Other scholars, however, have contested his interpretations, suggesting he read too literally into metaphors and symbolism in the text. In the realm of archaeology, physical evidence can also be ambiguous. While we find inexplicable feats of engineering in ancient structures and iconography that seems to depict otherworldly beings, these can also be explained by human innovation and the power of human imagination. Some proponents of the ancient astronaut theory point to technological achievements of ancient civilizations as evidence of extraterrestrial intervention. 
They argue that the construction of the pyramids of Giza or the Nazca lines in Peru would have required knowledge and technology beyond the capabilities of the people of the time. However, many archaeologists dispute this view, asserting that these feats are testament to human ingenuity rather than alien assistance. Turning to the global similarities in myths, these can be explained by the shared human experiences and archetypal narratives. While it's intriguing to think that similar stories of celestial beings across cultures point to a common historical event, it's also possible that these myths arose from shared human fears, desires, and attempts to understand the natural world. If we pause for a moment and put the skepticism aside, what could this Anunnaki influence really mean? Starting with the texts, the Sumerians describe the Anunnaki as deities who descended from the heavens. They were seen as bringers of civilization, teaching humanity various aspects of culture like law, agriculture, architecture, and even the mysterious art of divination. If we consider this from an ancient astronaut perspective, this could be interpreted as these beings sharing advanced knowledge and technologies. This perspective gains even more weight when we consider how quickly civilization seemed to have sprung up in Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization. The region saw an almost abrupt transformation from a hunter-gatherer society to one that built cities, developed agriculture and invented writing. Could this sudden leap have been aided by extraterrestrial influence? Moving to the global scale, if the Anunnaki did influence other cultures, we might need to rethink the concept of independent innovation. Currently, historians believe that many cultures developed similar technologies and beliefs independently, a phenomenon called parallel evolution. But if the Anunnaki theory holds true, it suggests a more interconnected ancient world than we currently believe. To take an example, let's consider the pyramids. Pyramidal structures appear not only in Egypt, but also in cultures as far removed as the Mayans in Central America. If we were guided by extraterrestrials in our distant past, it certainly poses intriguing questions about our origins and our place in the universe. Are we truly alone, or have we been part of a galactic community since the dawn of civilization? And as always, thanks for watching. We have taken a journey through ancient texts, explored cultures from around the globe, and tried to decode the influence of the Anunnaki. While the theory of extraterrestrial intervention in our past remains a topic of speculation and debate, it prompts us to keep an open mind, to question the accepted narratives, and to continue our quest for knowledge. As we ponder the mysteries of our past, we may just find clues that could reshape our understanding of our place in the universe. But as we continue our search for answers, remember, it's not just about reaching the destination, but also about the thrill of the journey itself. Imagine we're about to embark on an odyssey across the world and through time, chasing the footprints of celestial beings known as the Anunnaki. From the fertile plains of Sumer, the pyramid-filled horizon of Egypt, the spiritual epics of India, the astronomical marvels of the Mayan civilization to the philosophical minds of ancient Greece, we find their echoes. Each of these remarkable civilizations, despite their geographical distance and chronological separation, shares a common narrative, an interaction with beings from the skies, advanced entities that influence the course of their development. Intriguing, isn't it? So fasten your seatbelts as we journey across the globe and explore the evidence of the Anunnaki influence on these diverse cultures. Time to traverse the ocean and delve into the mysteries of ancient India, an enduring civilization with a treasure trove of rich mythology and advanced understanding of mathematics and astronomy. Much like the civilizations we've explored thus far, ancient India also bears hints of possible extraterrestrial or Anunnaki influence. One of the most striking signs comes from the ancient texts known as the Vedas, written in Sanskrit over 3,000 years ago. These texts contain references to Vimanas, flying chariots or machines capable of traveling in the air, underwater, and even through space. Ye detailed descriptions of these Vimanas in texts like the Vaimanika Shastra bear uncanny resemblances to modern interpretations of advanced aircraft or spaceships. Could these have been the vehicles of the Anunnaki, interpreted through the lens of ancient Indian culture? Interestingly, the Vedas and other ancient Indian texts, like the Puranas and the Mahabharata, also speak of powerful beings called Devas, who descended from the heavens, possessed advanced knowledge and often intermingled with humans. Some researchers suggest a link between the Anunnaki and these Devas, 
as both are depicted as celestial beings providing knowledge and guidance to mankind. Ancient India also excelled in areas like mathematics, astronomy, architecture and medicine. The concept of zero, the decimal system, complex algebraic equations, all were understood and used in ancient India. Astronomy-wise, ancient Indians had knowledge of the planets in our solar system, could predict eclipses and understood the heliocentric model of the solar system. This advanced knowledge is, by some, attributed to the influence of the Anunnaki. Finally, let's consider the architectural marvels of ancient India. Structures like the Brihadeswara Temple, the Konark Sun Temple and the intricate steppe wells of Gujarat all exhibit an understanding of complex geometries, precision and knowledge of materials that were quite advanced for their time. Some researchers posit these too as evidence of extraterrestrial assistance. The parallels drawn between ancient India and other civilizations' interaction with potential celestial beings adds another layer to our discussion on the Anunnaki's possible global influence. Let's take a look into ancient Egypt, a civilization renowned for its grandiose architecture and rich mythology, to unearth potential signs of the Anunnaki. The pyramids of Egypt stand as a wonder for modern researchers. They are feats of engineering and design that remain challenging to replicate, even with our current technology. Is it possible that the advanced knowledge and methods used in their construction were passed down by the Anunnaki? Then there's the Book of the Dead, a funerary text providing detailed descriptions of the afterlife and instructions for the soul's journey there. It includes spells, charms and formulas for the deceased to use in the afterlife, demonstrating a deep understanding of metaphysical realities beyond the material world. Some proponents of the Anunnaki theory suggest that this spiritual knowledge could be a gift from these advanced beings. The pantheon of Egyptian gods is another area of interest. The gods were seen as immensely powerful beings, capable of human-like emotions and interactions, and they often intervened in human affairs. Many of these gods were depicted with humanoid bodies and animal heads, evoking images of alien beings. One such deity, Thoth, the god of writing and knowledge, is often linked to the Anunnaki due to his role in imparting wisdom to humans. Moreover, the stories of the pharaohs, considered gods incarnate, align with Sumerian beliefs about the kingship being lowered from heaven. The divine right of the pharaohs to rule could be interpreted as a parallel to the Anunnaki's assumed authority over humanity. The advanced civilization of ancient Egypt, with its monumental architecture, intricate belief systems, and knowledge of celestial bodies resonates with the Anunnaki narrative. As with the Sumerians, could the Egyptians have received extraterrestrial guidance leading to their rapid advancements? Let's dive into now the intricate civilization of the Mayans and explore the tantalizing possibility of Anunnaki influence. The Mayan civilization, which flourished in Central America from approximately 2000 BC to the 16th century, left a significant mark on history through their impressive architectural feats, deep understanding of astronomy, and complex calendar systems. Could these achievements have been guided by extraterrestrial beings, perhaps the Anunnaki? The Mayan pyramids, for instance, are some of the most iconic structures from the ancient world. Constructed with a precise understanding of architectural design, geometry and spatial organization, they evoke an eerie similarity to the pyramids of Egypt, thousands of miles away. Could this be a sign of an Anunnaki blueprint used in multiple ancient civilizations? The Mayans also possessed an astonishing understanding of celestial mechanics. They tracked planetary cycles, accurately predicted solar eclipses, and even recognized the precession of the equinoxes, a slow 26000 year cycle related to Earth's rotation. The Mayan Long Count calendar is famous for its supposed prediction of the end of the world in 2012. This complex calendrical system, together with their astronomical knowledge, suggests a level of sophistication that many theorists argue could be evidence of extraterrestrial guidance. In the realm of mythology, the Mayan god Kukulkan, also known as Quetzalcoatl in the Aztec culture, bears similarities to the Anunnaki. This feathered serpent deity was a bringer of knowledge, teaching the arts of civilization to humanity, mirroring the roles of Enki and Thoth in Sumerian and Egyptian mythology, respectively. Also fascinating are the Mayan artifacts and drawings that suggest contact with extraterrestrial beings. 
The Mayan ruler Lord Pakal's tomb, for example, contains carvings that some interpret as him operating a kind of spacecraft. Digging deeper into ancient Greece, we find further evidence that correlates with Anunnaki theories, the pantheon of Greek gods renowned for their intervention in human affairs, complex relationships, and feats beyond human understanding, could potentially be interpreted as the Anunnaki's presence. Take Prometheus, one of the Titans, as a compelling example. Prometheus was deemed a hero to humanity, stealing fire from the gods and gifting it to humankind. This act of rebellion against his divine peers symbolizes the transfer of advanced knowledge, akin to how the Anunnaki were said to impart advanced technology and wisdom in the Sumerian texts. Moreover, let's consider the ancient oracle site of Delphi, believed to be the center of the world by the ancient Greeks. There, the high priestess, the Pythia, would enter trances and deliver prophecies. Could these trance states have been enabled by Anunnaki technology or knowledge, as some theorists speculate? Also, the legends of Greek demigods, born of a human and a god, echo the tales of the Anunnaki creating a hybrid human race. Figures like Hercules and Perseus, known for their superior strength and abilities, mirror the Sumerian tales of the Anunnaki's influence on humanity's development. As we delve deeper into these ancient Greek stories, we can't ignore the thematic parallels to the Anunnaki narratives. These accounts, rich in symbol and mystery, offer tantalizing possibilities. Is it mere coincidence or could it be evidence of extraterrestrial interactions? In examining these narratives and the uncanny resemblances they share with Anunnaki theories, we add another layer to the complex tapestry of human history and our quest to understand our origins. Let's travel back in time to Mesopotamia, uh, to the heart of Sumer, where the earliest recorded mentions of the Anunnaki were found. If we were to stroll down the streets of Sumer, we'd find ourselves in one of the world's oldest civilizations, known for inventing the wheel, creating one of the earliest forms of writing and establishing law codes. But amidst all this innovation, what really stands out are their intricate stories of the Anunnaki. The Sumerians believed that these gods descended from the heavens, and the name Anunnaki itself translates to those of royal blood or princely offspring. Their accounts depicted the Anunnaki as being responsible for the creation of mankind and civilization, teaching humans various disciplines like agriculture, law, and even complex architectural techniques. These narratives are carved into cuneiform tablets, some of which include the Epic of Creation, known as the Enuma Elish, and the Epic of Gilgamesh. These tablets illustrate the Anunnaki as complex beings, with individual names, personalities, and roles. Among them were key figures like Enki, the god of water and wisdom, and Enlil, the god of air and earth, whose interactions with humans formed the backbone of many Sumerian tales. Even more intriguing are the physical depictions of the Anunnaki, often portrayed as humanoid but with wings or halos, indicating their celestial origin. But where things get even more interesting is the technological prowess the Sumerians attributed to the Anunnaki. Not only were these beings described as spacefaring, but the Sumerians also talked about their intricate knowledge of our solar system, mentioning the existence of outer planets long before our modern telescopes confirmed their presence. This raises a tantalizing question. How could an ancient civilization, supposedly without sophisticated technology, possess such astronomical knowledge unless it was imparted to them? This impressive correlation between Sumerian knowledge and the Anunnaki's teachings has led many to theorize that these were not just creative myths, but historical records indicating an advanced extraterrestrial influence on our earliest civilizations. As we delve deeper into other ancient cultures, we'll find that the Sumerians were not alone in their encounters with celestial beings, adding another layer to this interstellar puzzle. Now that we've toured the globe and discovered how several ancient civilizations may have been influenced by what they perceived as celestial beings, it's time to take a broader look at this global narrative. It's quite striking, isn't it? Thousands of years ago, societies separated by vast oceans with no feasible means of contact all tell stories of celestial beings visiting Earth, sharing knowledge and helping shape their societies. These stories are ingrained in their architecture, their writings, their art, and their oral traditions. What's more, these beings often share common traits across cultures, such as descending from the sky, possessing advanced knowledge, and intermingling with humans. So, what does this mean? 
Are these similarities simply a result of human imagination and our inherent fascination with the cosmos, or do they hold traces of a long-gone interaction with extraterrestrial beings, like the Anunnaki? Many researchers believe the latter, citing the astounding complexity of ancient structures, the advancement of certain societies, and the universal telling of similar stories as evidence. They argue that our ancestors were not just creative storytellers, but also the record keepers of a forgotten chapter in human history, a chapter in which humanity was not alone. While skeptics point out that similarities in these narratives can also be explained through Jungian concepts of shared archetypes and collective unconscious, this doesn't fully explain the intricate details and advanced knowledge embedded within these stories. Moreover, the concept of cargo cults in more recent history, where isolated tribes perceived technologically advanced visitors as gods and incorporated them into their cultural narratives, suggests a potential model for how ancient societies could have interpreted extraterrestrial visitors. Our journey through these civilizations and their narratives highlights the ubiquity of these celestial narratives in human culture. Whether this points to the Anunnaki or merely to our ancestors' shared sense of wonder and their desire to comprehend the cosmos remains an open question and a subject of ongoing debate, further emphasizing the need for continual exploration and open-minded research into our ancient past. Have you ever wondered what secrets are buried beneath the sands of time? Picture this, ancient Egypt, a civilization that left behind architectural wonders like the Sphinx and the pyramids. But what if everything we've been taught about these iconic structures is just a fraction of their true story? Consider the possibility that the pyramids and the Sphinx could be older than the Egyptians themselves that the Sphinx might once have been Anubis, the jackal-headed god, and that the pyramids might contain mathematical marvels and alignments with celestial bodies, intricacies that could suggest a technology or knowledge way beyond the human capability of that era, perhaps pointing towards alien gods. Let's look at the Great Sphinx, a symbol of ancient Egypt that continues to perplex scholars today. The Sphinx is like a silent sentinel, sitting on the Giza Plateau, its weathered face gazing eastward towards the rising sun. But if you examine the Sphinx closely, there are clues in its geology that suggest its story may be more complex than we initially thought. One geologist, Dr. Robert Schock, first brought attention to this in the 90s when he proposed a controversial theory about the Sphinx's age. He noticed that the erosion patterns on the Sphinx appeared to have been caused by water, not just a bit of rain, but thousands of years of heavy rainfall, the kind that hasn't occurred in the Giza region for about 10,000 years since the end of the last ice age. Now, traditional Egyptology places the construction of the Sphinx in the reign of Pharaoh Khafre, around 2500 BCE when the area was already an arid desert. So where did this water come from? Shoch proposed that the Sphinx may be far older than traditionally believed dating back to a time when Egypt was a lush tropical landscape with heavy monsoons and flash floods. Of course, the implications of this are profound, shaking the bedrock of our historical understanding. If the Sphinx was weathered by water and this weathering occurred before Egypt became a desert, it would mean that the monument was already ancient by the time the first pharaoh took the throne. It also begs the question, who built it? The civilization capable of such monumental architecture would predate any we know of. Could there be an unknown advanced civilization lost to the sands of time waiting to be discovered? Isn't that what makes history so exciting? The fact that we don't have all the answers yet. Let's now delve into an even more controversial theory surrounding the Sphinx. Now we've all been brought up knowing it as the Sphinx, but what if it wasn't always a lion-bodied, human-headed creature that we see today? What if it was something different? This theory brings us to Robert Temple, a British author and researcher. He proposed a highly debated theory that the Great Sphinx was originally not a Sphinx at all, but was instead a massive statue of the jackal god Anubis. Yes, you heard it right. Anubis, the god of embalming and the dead, known for guiding souls in the afterlife. But why Anubis? Temple noted that the current human head of the Sphinx is proportionally much smaller than its body, which could indicate that the head was recarved from a larger original. In this case, a jackal head would fit the larger body better in proportion. Besides, Anubis is typically portrayed as a recumbent canine or a muscular man with a jackal's head, not so far from the Sphinx's current layout. 
Moreover, there's the location of the Sphinx to consider. It sits in front of the Khafre's Pyramid as if it's guarding the entrance to the afterlife, a job usually assigned to Anubis in ancient Egyptian mythology. Could it be that the Sphinx, which literally means living image, was the living image of Anubis instead of the human-headed lion we see today? As you might imagine, this hypothesis has been met with skepticism from mainstream Egyptologists. There are many factors to consider, including the established symbolism of lion-bodied creatures in the ancient world and the absence of any ancient texts referring to the Sphinx as Anubis. Our curiosity is only just getting started. Theories like these challenge the status quo and keep us asking questions. After all, isn't it a bit weird? The awe-inspiring Great Pyramids of Giza are not only remarkable because of their massive scale, but also due to their mathematical precision and alignment. You know, the kind of precision that is surprisingly difficult to achieve even today with all our modern technology and tools. This leads us to ask, how could an ancient civilization accomplish such a feat? Let's start with the Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Pyramid of Khufu. It's the largest of the three pyramids, originally standing at an astonishing 481 feet. Not to mention, it was the tallest man-made structure in the world for over 3,800 years, until the completion of Lincoln Cathedral in England in the 14th century. But it's not just about the size. The base of the Great Pyramid is a near-perfect square with each side measuring about 756 feet. The level of precision is such that the difference in lengths between the four sides is less than two inches. Moreover, each side of the pyramid is carefully aligned to one of the cardinal directions, north, south, east and west again with an astoundingly minimal error. This already seems remarkable, right? But hold on to your seats because it's about to get a lot more intriguing. The Pyramid of Khufu, along with the other two pyramids of Giza, are positioned in a way that mirrors the alignment of the three stars in the belt of the constellation Orion. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Orion was associated with the god Osiris, the god of the afterlife. This cosmic correlation suggests a deep understanding of astronomy that goes beyond mere chance. The mathematical sophistication and astronomical alignment present in these pyramids point to a highly advanced civilization. But again, the question remains, how was this accomplished? Mainstream history tells us that this was all done by sheer human ingenuity and labor, using simple tools and methods. Others, however, speculate about intervention from a higher intelligence, perhaps even extraterrestrial. The theories are as vast and intriguing as the pyramids themselves. Isn't it all just amazing? Or maybe it's just a bit weird. There's a saying that goes, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. If we were to time travel thousands of years back and show a smartphone to the ancient Egyptians, they would likely see it as a divine or magical artifact. With this perspective, some researchers suggest that the pyramids and indeed much of the awe-inspiring accomplishments of ancient Egypt may have been influenced or even directly facilitated by extraterrestrial entities whom the ancients may have perceived as gods. There is a theory known as the ancient astronaut theory that proposes the interaction of extraterrestrial beings with ancient humans. Supporters of this theory suggest that much of the technology, knowledge and spiritual understanding of our ancient civilizations was handed down from these celestial visitors. The idea has gained popularity due to authors like Eric von Däniken and shows like Ancient Aliens on the History Channel. Let's take a closer look at this theory in the context of ancient Egypt. Proponents point out that the construction of the pyramids, especially given the remarkable mathematical precision and astronomical alignments, could not have been possible with the tools and knowledge known to exist during the reign of Pharaoh Khufu. Therefore, they argue, the pyramids might be the result of technology or knowledge provided by an advanced, non-human civilization. Further fueling this theory, are the Egyptian texts and artwork that seem to depict what could be interpreted as advanced technology or celestial beings. One example is the hieroglyphs in the Temple of Seti I in Abydos that bear an uncanny resemblance to modern aircrafts. Also, many ancient Egyptian deities were associated with celestial bodies and were believed to possess incredible powers. Could it be that these gods were extraterrestrials, perceived as divine due to their advanced technology and knowledge, were they the ones who instructed or aided the Egyptians in constructing the pyramids? 
The Great Pyramid of Giza is not just a testament to the engineering prowess of the ancient Egyptians, it's also an architectural mystery that seems to embed a deep connection to the cosmos. Let's delve into the intriguing details of how the structures on the Giza Plateau reflect an intimate understanding of the heavens, an understanding that seems surprisingly advanced for a civilization from more than 4,000 years ago. It's well known that the layout of the three primary pyramids mirrors the positioning of the stars in Orion's belt. This correlation was brought to the forefront by Robert Boval and Adrian Gilbert in their Orion Correlation Theory. The three stars of Orion's belt, Alnitak, Alnilam and Mintaka, align almost perfectly with the apexes of the three pyramids of Giza. Moreover, the orientation of the pyramids to the north is so precise that it deviates from true north by just 3 slash 60 of a degree. Could the builders have had an advanced astronomical knowledge or perhaps assistance from a more advanced civilization? Going deeper, the Great Pyramid itself has elements of celestial alignment. Its narrow shafts, dubbed air shafts or spirit stones, seem to be aimed at specific stars. The southern shaft of the King's Chamber points to Orion, while the northern shaft points to the circumpolar stars. Similarly, in the Queen's Chamber, one shaft points to Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, and another points to the Ursa Minor constellation. It's fascinating to think that these structures built thousands of years ago could act as star pointers. Adding another layer of intrigue, the Sphinx also shows signs of astronomical alignments. The Sphinx faces due east, and some theorists propose that it was designed to observe the equinoxes and solstices. The theory of the Sphinx representing the constellation of Leo during the Age of Leo, approximately 10,500 BCE, as proposed by Robert Boval and Graham Hancock, challenges mainstream chronology and makes us question our understanding of the Sphinx and its origins. While skeptics argue these alignments could be coincidental, it's hard to dismiss the accuracy and precision involved. Could it be a random occurrence or is it evidence of an ancient civilization that had deep astronomical knowledge or perhaps even a sign of extraterrestrial intervention? As we continue to explore and decipher the secrets of ancient Egypt, the questions just keep piling up. And as always, thanks for watching. As we delve into the past, we discover that our history is full of mysteries and questions that even today's technology struggles to answer. From water erosion on the Sphinx to the possibility of Anubis taking its place, from the marvel of mathematical precision in pyramids to the curious celestial alignments, we're left pondering if human hands alone were capable of these feats or if there were other extraterrestrial forces at play. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, one thing is for sure. The more we explore, the more fascinating our world becomes. When you look at the vast and timeless desert of Egypt, the word Kemet might not immediately come to mind. Yet this term, which means black land in the ancient Egyptian language, was once used to describe this area highlighting the fertile soil along the banks of the Nile River, the lifeblood of the civilization we know today as ancient Egypt. But, were the Kemites merely skilled farmers and pyramid builders, or was there more to them? Could there possibly be connections to other worldly beings? The term Kemites stems from Kemet, which translates to the Black Land in the ancient Egyptian language. This phrase illustrates the contrast between the fertile black soil of the Nile River's banks and the harsh surrounding desert, often referred to as Deshret, or the Red Land. However, the term Kemet signifies far more than a geographical landscape. It represented a civilization that was one of the most enduring and influential in human history. The people of Kemet, the Kemetes, constructed a culture that has contributed a great deal to the world in various fields such as architecture, mathematics, science, and art. The Kemites were builders of an incredible magnitude. They are known for the creation of the pyramids, grand burial structures for their pharaohs, and the Sphinx, one of the most iconic monuments worldwide. The sheer precision and scale of these constructions are an enduring testament to their engineering prowess and architectural ingenuity. They were also highly sophisticated in their administrative systems, maintaining detailed records of their pharaohs, political affairs and religious rituals. These have been crucial in enabling us to piece together the history and societal structure of Kemet. The religion of the Kemites was intricately woven into every aspect of their daily life, 
They had a polytheistic belief system with a pantheon of gods and goddesses, each overseeing different aspects of life and nature. These religious beliefs not only guided their moral code, but also played a significant role in their understanding of the world, life, death and the afterlife. In the realm of art, Kemets were masterful. Their sculptures, paintings and pottery were not only beautiful but also carried significant symbolic meaning. These artifacts provide a window into their values, beliefs and everyday life, contributing to our understanding of this extraordinary civilization. The association between the Kemites and extraterrestrial theories mainly originates from their incredible achievements in construction, astronomy and science that appear to far surpass what would have been achievable with the technology thought to be available to them. This includes, most notably, the construction of the Pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx, which showcase an astounding level of precision and understanding of complex mathematics and engineering. One element of this theory focuses on the construction of the pyramids, specifically the Great Pyramid of Giza. The pyramid's alignment with the magnetic North Pole, the precise dimensions and ratios correlating with complex mathematics and astronomical phenomena, and the extraordinary undertaking of constructing such a monument with huge stones, all have led some to question whether the Kemites had help from technologically advanced extraterrestrial beings. Moreover, the precise alignment of the pyramids of Giza with the stars in the belt of Orion has also been used as evidence for this theory. This alignment, along with various other astronomical alignments found in their architecture and art, suggests a deep understanding of the cosmos that seems uncannily advanced for the time. Another aspect of Kemet's civilization that feeds into this theory is their mythology and religious beliefs. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs and artwork are full of references to sky gods, powerful beings who descended from the stars and strange objects seen in the sky. Proponents of the ancient astronaut theory suggest that these are not myths or symbols, but literal depictions of extraterrestrial visitors. It's worth noting, however, that these theories often come under scrutiny. Many scholars argue that these theories underestimate the ingenuity, intelligence and skills of ancient human civilizations. They point out that with an understanding of simple machines, human labor and time, the Kemites could have achieved these remarkable constructions on their own. Whether or not the Kemites had extraterrestrial help is a matter of personal belief. What is undeniable is the awe-inspiring and influential legacy that Kemet civilization has left behind. Now, diving into the advanced knowledge of the Kemites. Now, this is where things get really interesting. The civilization of Kemet was notably advanced for its time, with numerous achievements in various fields such as astronomy, mathematics, architecture and medicine. Firstly, the Kemites were skilled astronomers. Their understanding of celestial bodies was so profound that they were able to develop a calendar that is almost as accurate as the one we use today. Based on the movements of the sun, moon and stars, they formulated a 365-day calendar divided into 12 months. This marked a significant leap in the understanding of timekeeping. Moreover, they developed complex mathematical concepts including fractions and geometric principles which allowed them to create stunning architectural masterpieces such as the pyramids. They understood principles of engineering, physics and geometry that wouldn't be rediscovered until thousands of years later. In the field of medicine, Kemets demonstrated advanced knowledge too. Papyrus scripts reveal they had knowledge of human anatomy, surgical procedures and even remedies for various ailments. The medical practices were so developed that some even argue they carried out complex procedures like brain surgery. The complexity of these achievements has led some to speculate about a possible extraterrestrial influence. Could such a civilization have gained such advanced knowledge on their own? Or was there external help involved? Theories propose that the Kemites could have had contact with an alien civilization that shared their knowledge with them, sparking the rapid development of their society. But of course, this is all conjecture and the debate continues. Now let's plunge headfirst into one of the most enduring mysteries of the Kemites, the pyramids. The pyramids of Egypt, built by the Kemites, are one of the most recognizable and enigmatic structures of the ancient world. The most famous of them, the Great Pyramid of Giza, is a marvel of engineering and precision that even modern technology struggles to replicate. This Great Pyramid is estimated to consist of over 2.3 million blocks of stone, 
each weighing an average of 2.5 tons and some even up to 15 tons. The precision of its construction is staggering. Its base is level to within just 2.1 centimeters and the sides are oriented to the cardinal directions within three arc minutes. The construction methodology behind such a mammoth task is an enduring mystery. Several theories have been proposed about how these structures were built, from simple manual labor to complex machines and even supernatural or alien assistance. One of the most prevalent theories is that the Kimites constructed a spiraling ramp to haul the massive stones to the required heights. However, the sheer logistics of such a venture in terms of workforce, resources and time make this theory a subject of debate. More fringe theories have posited that the Kemites had access to advanced technology, perhaps even extraterrestrial. These theories often point to the precision and alignment of the pyramids with celestial bodies, a task that would seemingly require a more advanced understanding of mathematics and astronomy than was available at the time. One of the most fascinating elements of Kemet's rich culture is its art. This isn't simply due to its aesthetic appeal, but more intriguingly, the narratives and depictions that the art encompasses. The Kemetic art includes a wide range of expressive forms, from sculpture and architecture to relief and pottery, and of course, the remarkable hieroglyphic writing system. Looking closer at the artwork, some researchers and theorists have pointed out representations that could potentially denote alien encounters. This is a contentious interpretation and is not universally accepted by historians or Egyptologists, but it certainly makes for a compelling discussion. Among the most cited pieces are the relief depictions found in the Temple of Siti, once in Abydos. This particular relief has stirred controversy as it seems to show objects resembling modern-day helicopters, submarines and even spaceships. How could this be? given that these technologies wouldn't exist for thousands of years after the relief was created. Then there are the depictions of the gods themselves. Many of them, like the sky god Horus, who is represented as a man with the head of a falcon, and the god Ra, who is frequently portrayed traveling through the sky in a sunboat, are theorized by some to symbolize extraterrestrial beings. Critics argue these interpretations are merely a result of pareidolia, the human tendency to perceive meaningful patterns where none actually exist. However, proponents of the alien theory believe that these peculiarities are too significant to dismiss as coincidence. What's clear is that comatic art laden with its mystical symbols and cryptic depictions is still a fertile ground for exploration and interpretation. While the comatic civilization's feats of engineering medicine and astronomy were truly remarkable. Some believe the alien connection theories are a step too far, an overly speculative leap that discounts the achievements of the ancient Kimites themselves. In this segment, we delve into the skepticism and the rational view of these theories. Firstly, it's important to acknowledge that correlation does not imply causation. Yes, there are intriguing overlaps between some ancient Egyptian depictions and what we might interpret as UFOs or alien figures today. But this doesn't necessarily mean that aliens were involved. After all, to the untrained eye, a cloud can resemble a dragon or a castle. But this doesn't make it so. Many experts and historians argue that interpreting the gods and hieroglyphs as aliens or UFOs is a form of cultural reductionism simplifying complex, symbolic artwork into an anachronistic, literal interpretation. Egyptologists point out that hieroglyphs were highly stylized, symbolic and sacred, often representing ideas or concepts rather than physical entities. The advanced knowledge demonstrated by the Kemites, while certainly impressive, may be more a testament to their sophisticated understanding of mathematics, astronomy and engineering, rather than alien intervention. Remember, the Kemites were one of the longest-lasting civilizations in human history, giving them ample time to develop and refine their knowledge. Finally, there's the issue of Occam's razor, the principle that the simplest explanation is usually the best one. In this case, the simpler explanation is that the Kemites, through hundreds of years of intellectual pursuit, achieved their advancements on their own. While the idea of ancient alien visitations is an exciting theory, it adds a layer of complexity and speculation that isn't necessarily supported by hard evidence. So were the Kimites, the people of the Black Land, the benefactors of alien knowledge? Or were they simply skilled artisans, scientists and builders who utilized their understanding of the world around them 
to create one of the most enduring and fascinating civilizations in human history. Like the Sphinx, the answer remains enigmatic, silently gazing out into the sands of time. But one thing's for sure, the legacy of the Kamites, whether divinely, extraterrestrially or humanly inspired, continues to captivate us and will likely do so for many millennia to come. And as always, thanks for watching.